And with that, we are going to invite our last speaker of the day, the one, the truly incomparable Brian K. McNeil. Welcome, Brian, to the stage. I am so excited to have you here today with us. <laughs> Haley, thank you very much. I am honored as well. I started my timer because I'm not going to go over. I'm going to be respectful to the time. But I will say this. My name is still Brian K. McNeil. I'm the sales confidence coach. And everyone who watches this segment will be better at selling themselves and their services at the end of my talk than they were from the beginning of my talk. And this is not what I hope to accomplish. It's what I know will be true. Every single one of you that watches this talk will become better at selling themselves and their services, and you all are going to be much more profitable starting now. Now, I've got 19 minutes left to go, so I'm going to get right into it. Now, <clears throat> when I talk to an audience or get a new client, one of the first things I do is I have them take out a sheet of paper and number from 1 to 10, skipping a line between each number, and I have my timer set for three minutes. And I say, when I say go, and you can do it, if you, we're not going to do it now in the interest of time, but when I say go, I'm going to want you to write down 10 great reasons why someone should hire you and your services. 10 great reasons why someone should be willing to give money in exchange for what you're offering. 10 great reasons why someone should work with you, go. I say go, and I keep talking to them while they're working. And I'm, I'm and I know I'm distracting them on purpose. I'm saying things like, so you know, how long you been in business? What do you like about what you do? And they're going, they're going, they're going. Now, very often, whether it's a room of one person or a hundred people or a thousand people, very often when the three minutes is up, and I'm preaching to them, it's very important that you finish this within three minutes. If I gave you all day, you can come up with 35 or 45 reasons why someone should work with you, but I'm only giving you three minutes and I want you to come up with 10. I'm even saying to them, if you can't come up with 10 great reasons why someone should work with you and your services within three minutes time, that means you either have forgotten some of your benefits or you don't know enough to be profitable. And I know that you do know enough to be profitable. So let me tell you, invariably, when the list and time is up and they start reading out their list, and maybe some of you guys will have uh, similar answers. Why should anybody be willing to work with you? Why should anybody be willing to hire you and your services? You'll get answers like, because I'm hardworking, because I'm honest, because I'm passionate, because I love people, because I'm uh, available to them, because I'm certified, I have a degree, because I've been doing this for a long time, because I'm really, really skilled at it, because all those things are great. Um because I love helping people, because I really, really do care about their results. All those things are great. And none of them are a reason to give you money. But all of those are reasons to make someone like you or respect you or even admire you. But that's not a reason to give you money. That's not a reason to hire you. All of those great things I'm doing this for 20 years. Great. If you cannot articulate why that's a benefit to the person that you're often telling that to, it's not a reason to give you money. It's just something to like about you. That's it. I'm going to kill some old saws today, but I'm going to tell you why people will hire you, why they will give you money. That's what I came here today. I'm going to give you the seven reasons why they will hire you. Now, if you're one of these people who wrote down all those things I said because you're hard work and experience and care and love and available and all that kind of stuff, you're fun, you're funny. Those are all things that make people like you, but not give you money. Here's why they will give you money. Write it down. The first one is the word. I mean, and these are the these are the seven things that people historically and enthusiastically want to give their money in order to get, okay? History shows us this. These are the things they want to invest their money in. Number one is time, T-I-M-E, time. Is there any part of your services that will help your clients to save some time? Are there any results that they'll be able to achieve faster as a result of working with you than they would have if they didn't want to work, if they didn't work with you? 
If there's any way you help a client when it comes to time, that is a good reason to hire you. And you should talk about that. That's a good reason to give you money. Talk about time. If you let me help you, you'll be able to achieve this result much faster than you would have without my help. If that's a true statement, if you can verify it, that's a reason to give you money. Number one is time. Think about that for your business. Are there any results that you help them achieve faster? Or is there any way you save them some time? That's number one. Number two is the word money. M-O-N-E-Y, money. Now, this happens in a few ways. People want to give their money to the person or the thing. The person or the thing that they believe will help them to either save some money or earn more money or both. Does your services help your clients to either save some money, earn more money, or both? If your services does help them to save some money or earn more money or both, you should articulate how so, because that's a good reason to hire you. And for most of you, your services will help your clients when it comes to money if you just get a little bit creative. Just a little bit creative. Does your services help your clients to either save some money or earn more money or both? Talk about that. They can love you and never hire you. But if you help them to earn more money or save some money, that's a reason to work with you. Amen and amen. Amen means you heard, understand, and agree. Amen. Okay. Now, time, money, good feelings. Now, the third one is good feelings. Good feelings. Good feelings. People want to give their money to the person or the thing that they believe will help them to either feel better about themselves or help them to imagine others having a higher opinion of them or both. Does your services... <clears throat> Help your clients to feel better about themselves now? Or can you help them to imagine others having a higher opinion of them because of your services or both? Or both. For example, a man buying a financial plan for his family. He did that because he believes that as the head of the household, this is a responsible thing for me to do. And I feel good about myself for doing it. And he can also imagine his wife and children appreciating what dad did for them, even when he's gone. The 60-year-old man buying the red convertible sports car bought that car because he believes when he drives that car, he's going to look cool in it. And he also thinks that when you see him, you're going to agree with his opinion that, yes, he looks cool in it. He didn't buy it because it had good brakes. He bought it because he feels like he's going to look good in it. Is there any part of your services that will help your clients to feel better about themselves now? Or can you help them to imagine others having a higher opinion of them or both? Get a little bit creative and I can help you with it if you can't do it on your own. Okay. Or maybe some partner with someone. Time, money, good feelings. The fourth reason why people historically and enthusiastically will give money in exchange for a service is <clears throat> solutions to a problem. Now, when I say solutions to a problem, I'm talking about the big and obvious problem that is solved by you and your services. What is the big and obvious problems? For very many entrepreneurs, they solve lots of problems, but they are not interesting in lots of problems. The big and obvious one. Can you clearly articulate what is the big and obvious problem that is solved by you and your services? That's the one that works, okay? If I keep talking about I can solve this problem, that problem, that problem, that problem, the more problems you espouse that you solve, the less interesting you become. But if you can be known for solving one big, one obvious problem that is solved by you and your services, that's a reason to give you money. That's a reason to hire you. I'm giving you the seven reasons why people historically and enthusiastically will give money in exchange for services. Number one was time. Two was money. Number three was good feelings. Number four was solutions to a problem. Number five was, number five is good health. Good health. Is there any way that you and your services will improve your client's health? 
put a little thought to this here. Now, if you're in the fitness industry or um, uh, health and wellness industry, it's obvious how you improve their health. But what if you're a coach or consultant or financial planner? Is there any way that you improve their health? There is. One of the ways that you improve their health is you can take away some of their worries. You can take away some of their stressors. If you have a service that removes some of your clients' worries, that takes away some of their stress, you should talk about that because that is a good reason to hire you and your services. Now, I said when I first started talking, everyone that watches this talk is going to be better at selling themselves and their services than they were before I started talking. I've given you five of the reasons why people will give you money. And I have talked about so far all those other things that people think why someone would hire you because I'm good. With, I'm good at it because I'm hardworking, because I have a degree, because I'm respectful, because I'm available, because I'm fun, because I'm funny, because I'm experienced, because uh, all these things, all those things make people like you, but not give you money. They will like you for a long time. They will save a seat for you at the cookout. They will speak well of you in your, when, even when you're not there, but still not work with you. Time, money, good feelings, solutions to a problem, good health. The sixth out of the seven is the word children. Children. Is there any way that you and your services help your clients when it comes to their children? Now, you don't need all seven. You only need one. But as many of them as you can get, the better. How do you help them when it comes to their children? Do your services help your clients to become better role models for children or more available to their children or help their children in another way? If that is so, if it's true, you should talk about that. Time, money, good feelings, solutions to a problem, good health, children. And the last one of the seven things that people in this country typically and historically want to spend their money on. These things that they want to invest in is the word pets, P-E-T-S, pets, pets, pets. Dogs, cats, we want to spend money on our pets in this country. Yes, we do. We want to spend our money. You do not have to have all seven. But if your services helps your clients in some way when it comes to them and their pets, you should talk about that too. Now, I've said of the seven reasons why people historically and enthusiastically want to invest money into a services. None of them, none of the top seven had anything to do with how much they like you. They liking you is fine, but that's not a reason to give you money. Think about this here. There are a lot of people that you know in business that you like personally that you've never done business with. And there are a lot of people that know you and like you personally and have never done business with you either. Why? Because liking you is not enough. Let me say this. Normally you hear this from very well-intentioned people and they are very well-intentioned and they know what they're saying. But this, this mantra, people do business with people that they know, like, and trust. You've heard it said before a lot of times. And the problem with it is that it's an abbreviation. And the other problem with it is that it's partially true. It's partially true. The no like and trust factor is an abbreviation from the original Greek formula, which meant people do business with people must listen to you before they can like you. They must like you before they can trust you. And they must trust you before they can buy from you. The difference between the Greek formula originally is they only have to like you enough to hear your story. They do not have to like you enough to put you in their wedding. They have to like you enough to hear what you have to offer. Okay? No like and trust by itself will get you in a place where you have a lot of friends but not business. You want to like them, yes, but you also have to give them a good reason to work with you. Like you're going to save them time in an area. You're going to help them earn more money in the area. You're going to relieve some of their stressors or take away some of their worries. Those things added to how much they like you is a reason to give you money. I've got five minutes and some change left. I'm hopeful that someone found some value already in what I said, but I'm going to use my whole time too. <laughs> I love to study sales. I study it daily for the last 30 years. I'm hoping everyone does. Yes, use every second, Sister Haley. I'm going to use them all. Okay, I accept my time. I got five and a half minutes to go. 
So the seven reasons why people will say yes to you. Know, like, and trust, understand by itself is going to hurt your business. You must give them a good reason to work with you. Now, let me say this too. In the five and a half minutes, y'all need to, because I'm going to impact somebody's life. People are going to hire you for either emotional reasons or for logical reasons. Emotional reasons are the way they imagine that they're going to feel after they have done business with you. Logical reasons are because it's smart and it makes sense and it's a good deal. Emotion has to do with the heart. Logic, the, the um, logic has to do with the brain. When the brain and the heart are in conflict, the heart invariably wins. People buy nine times faster what they want than what they need. So understanding this to be true, you must learn to sell yourself and your services with your secret weapon. And the secret weapon of selling yourself and your services is the word emotion. Emotion. Okay. Now, the primary tool that you use to employ your secret weapon emotion are the words that you choose. And there's some words that you need to add to your library now to help you to sell better. Hopefully you wrote down the seven reasons why people want to give money. Hopefully you understand no like and trust by itself is not enough already. But un get this part too, because I got four minutes left. Um, <clears throat> learn to use these words often and comfortably. The number one most emotional word in the English language starts with an L. Guess what it is? You're right. It's the word love. Most adults have taught themselves how to become uncomfortable saying the word love. I'm going to suggest to you that you get comfortable using the word love comfortably and often when you're offering your services, but not so that you're the star of the story. Like, I love helping people to sell better. Wrong way, because I'm the star of the story. I'm not selling to me. You're going to love the confidence you have once you learn how to sell better. You're going to love, or my clients say that they love. You're going to, they say, use the word love like that to offer your services because it feels good. It's number one secret for you, using emotional words. Love is the first word I want you to learn how to use. The second word I want you to use is the second most emotional word in the English language. Other than love, this word evokes more feelings than any other word. Starts with an H. What is the second most emotional word in English language starting with an H? No, it's not hate. It's actually the word home. H-O-M-E. Home. I'll be home for Christmas. Home sweet home. There's no place like home. For most people, the home is where your stuff is, where mom and them is, your food is, all your stuff. Learning to use the word home and offering your services will help you get closer to the clients. Um, you're going to love going home knowing that. Da, da, da. Now, I use both word love and home in the same sentence there. But everyone in your home will notice a difference in you if you let me help you. Everyone in your home will be benefited by this prop policy. Love, home. The third word, I got two minutes left. The third word I want you to learn how to use often and comfortably is the word that most adults wish they heard more often. They really wish someone would say this word to them. And everyone that's willing to say this word to them, they like so much better. The word that most adults wish they heard more often is the sound of their own first names. Their own first names. And the coolest thing about saying a person's first name, like Haley, the coolest thing about saying their name is you cannot overdo it. Every time you say their name, they like you more. It's almost like you're edifying them just by being willing to say their name. And you can't overdo it. Okay, you can say their name again and again and again, and you cannot overdo it. Saying, Learning to use the word love comfortably, learning to use the word home comfortably and offering your services, and paying them a credit by using their name. I know that somebody today got an answer to a question. I know someone today learned something from Brother Brian, maybe that they didn't know before, but that they can use immediately. What I wanted to do was give you things that were immediately actionable. And I'm hopeful that I accomplished my goal. Maybe someone can confirm what my initial goal was. I said, everyone that hears my talk is going to be better at selling themselves and their services when I'm done than they were before I started. Did I accomplish my goal? Somebody give me an amen or something. <laughs> 
that's my time. Okay. Uh, Sister Haley, come on in with me. I could keep I could go on for hours and days, but I wanted to I wanted to do this. How are you, Sister Haley? I am doing good. How are you doing, brother Brian? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. You have brought it home and I <laughs> loved it, Brian. <laughs> you loved it. I brought it home and you loved it. Look at what that's what's called um, applied learning demonstrated abilities right there. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being a speaker. That was incredibly powerful. Y'all, let's give Brian a round of applause because we <laughs> loved his talk so much and he just brought it all together and brought it all on home for us. Thank you, Brian. Thank you very well. much as That well. was awesome. Thank you guys for joining us for this month's One Talk. Make sure that you follow Brian and learn more from him about his amazing ability to help you bring in more sales. Thanks. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye-bye.